Hello everybody, I'm going to do a review on this weight distributing hitch I picked up from Harbor Freight. This is item number 61720. These retail for $259.99. It was on sale for $199.99. I applied a 25% off coupon, so I picked this up for $149.99 plus tax. Now they don't even list this model number on their website yet. This is, according to them at the store, new. The model number they have on their website currently is 67649 and it clearly looks different on these brackets and I'll show that momentarily uh, but the picture on the box still looks like the old one. So this is definitely a newer model. I called down there and they said that this one supersedes the other so I guess they're liquidating inventory maybe and rolling these out but usually they would show them on their website just under a different model number. Who knows? Anyway, what this is for is when you're towing a trailer there's a lot of weight on the tongue and it will push down on your tow vehicle and in effect raise the suspension in the front and it will make for a uh, hard to handle situation you have a little bit of difficulty with steering sometimes especially in a wind condition uh, as well as braking because you don't have as much weight on the front wheels so what this does with these bars and these chains and whatnot it effectively lifts the rear of the vehicle out so you can get everything in the same plane and it makes everything handle a lot better uh, there's also a sway kit that you can buy to control sway and I did buy one of those as well and I'm going to highlight that in a separate video since it is a completely separate product but I will be installing both of these on my rig and it should make it handle better uh, my trailer doesn't really have anything in it right now but even just going down the road uh, especially with winds big trucks passing me and stuff like that they just blow me all over the place so once I get a big load in there, I, I just want to be as safe as possible and this should be the answer to my problem. Now this is not for every possible scenario as far as tow weights, this, that, and the other. This has a 10,000 pound capacity for towing, but it has a 1,000 pound tongue weight maximum. So depending on the trailer you have and your actual tongue weight, you may need to get one of these that's heavier duty or one that's lighter duty. Uh, this is just for demonstration purposes. I'm and by no means an expert on this stuff, so I'm not going to give anybody any bad advice. So you're going to have to do your own homework on that. But we're going to move forward and step through the installation process. And if I see anything that I need to change uh, to what I think is a, a better option, then I'll address that as we go. Okay, well I'm rearranging the steps in the manual to suit my taste. Uh, I think they did some things in an odd manner, but I'll cover them nonetheless. In this particular step, I'm installing the U-bolts and locking them down. And they do come with two washers and two regular nuts. I'm ditching the regular nuts and I'll explain why. When you have this tightened up all the way, this link here is in a bind. It probably doesn't matter, but I don't like it, so I'm changing it. So I picked up four M8 by 1.25 pitch nylock nuts and here's one that I've completed. The nylocks are on here now with the washers beneath it and the chain is free to do whatever it wants to do. Like I said, probably not an issue, I just don't like the way that they had that taken care of. Alright, well I'm going to install my ball but this hole is too big for the shank size here. I don't think they mention it in the manual, but it did come with a take-up bushing you can put in here. So I'll drive that in from the back side and then install my ball. I'm only going to be able to get it so tight here. I'll finish it off when I get it attached to the truck. Alright, well I have my ball installed. I just wanted to show this piece in this orientation because there are some things on it. Uh, first and foremost, there's some grease zerks out here. It needs to be greased monthly if you leave it all put together maybe some fresh grease if you're starting to use it. Just for reference I'm using the Lucas Red and Tacky number two. This is my grease of choice for lubricating things like this. Now one of the reasons why I'm doing things in an odd order is the first thing they wanted you to do was put the arms up in here. That was the first step and then install the chains but shortly into it we're going to be mounting this 
on that at the vehicle so I'm gonna have to take them out anyway so it just didn't make sense to put them in there but just to show how they work and they are heavy when you put it in here there's a slot and I'm definitely gonna make sure there's a lot of grease in this because it does pivot in there simply push it in and now it's locked in to get it out just lift up on this and it'll slide right back out sometimes you may not need to use the bars it just depends on what your loads doing so they do come in and out fairly easily alright well I need to determine the required ball height so I can install this thing they basically want the tongue weight I don't have a tongue weight scale so I just pick 700 as an arbitrary number uh, as well as my trailer is fairly empty now so it could be anything I don't know but keep in mind on this if you're trying to measure the tongue weight you need to also include in this figure even though they don't mention it anything in the tow vehicle that is behind the axles so let's say for example I did have a 700 pound actual tongue weight on my trailer but 200 pounds behind the axle in my truck I would start with 900 pounds here just keep that in mind it will be divided by 200 if the vehicle has overload springs mine does not so divide by 100 that leaves me with 7 times an eighth inch so 7 eighth of an inch is my tow vehicle squat then I need to determine the coupler height and I simply took my trailer and uncoupled it on a level surface leveled the trailer out and measured from the ground to the top of the coupler and in my case it was 19 inches keep in mind that these are figures just for me don't go by these at all for yourself simply add those two together so 19 and 7 eighths of an inch is what I'm targeting for required ball height you can install the receiver and adjust this in this manner to try to hit that target or you can install it upside down I do not know what this range of motion is here on what you can get from top to the bottom You'll have to do your own homework on that but either way I'm targeting 19 and 7 eighths from the ground to the top of the hitch alright well I've run into something I'm not satisfied with this piece right here when I put this in there I have about an eighth inch worth of play and I certainly don't want this thing shifting back and forth as I'm traveling down the road and in my opinion that's going to put more of a shear force on these bolts now these are pretty hefty bolts but I don't want this thing moving at all so what I'm going to do is take a piece of flat steel and I'll cut it to dimensions and I'll pierce two holes in it and create a shim in essence that's the way I'm going to attack this for me this may not be a problem on all of them but I did notice it here uh, you might consider maybe getting some large fender washers or something to take up the gap but I'm gonna make a shim all right I've made the shim it's not too much to look at but it's function before fashion just to give you some dimensions on what I have here it is two inches wide and it just so happened it turned out to be four and seven eighths inches in length from the bottom edge right here to the center of this hole it's one and three sixteenths inches and from the center of this hole to the center of this hole is two and a half inches these holes have been pierced at a thirteen sixteenths inch in diameter and then of course I went out in the pitch black dark of night and dusted it with black paint just to help prevent a little bit of rusting so that's what it is and it's going to work just fine all right well I'd mentioned it is dark outside and I'm trying to spare everybody the misery of trying to view something like that so what I've done here is I've, I'm just mocking things up I'm, what I'm trying to do is determine it in which hole I need to install the hitch so I have three pieces of tape here on the ground uh, I don't know if you can see the marks that I've made on them but this one represents the ground I've measured from the ground up to the bottom edge of the hitch which I came out to 14 and 3 eighths and then I'm targeting 19 and 7 eighths for the ball height at the top so I'm just going to simply lay this down here 
on my mark and take this and I'm just doing a line of sight and lining up the top of the ball to that line right there and hopefully you can see that I'm out of travel so that's not going to work so let me flip this over and try it this way and see what we need okay so line of sight there it does appear that I need to install this hitch in the second hole up so that looks like that's going to work just fine all right well I've started bolting these two pieces together I'm in the second hole up for my application started inserting a bolt slid in my shim fed through and put a nut on the other side these will be tightened up later they're left loose for now but all of that play I had in here is now gone so I think that shim is a very very good thing to do all right well I decided to wait for daylight it was just too hard to try to get things lit up with the camera uh, I've installed the hitch in here and I also have the arms put in I've not lubricated anything I'll do that as the final step but one thing I don't like is the shape of this pin right here it just doesn't really hold on very well so I'm going to use my original pin you can see how much better that is the objective here is to use this and the stack of these washers there's a hole down in here so you need to loosen the bolt on the bottom and you can rock this down stack on some washers put it in there and then tighten that bolt to sandwich it together and you basically want these arms down here to be slanted down oh, 10 to 13 degrees downhill so I'm gonna get this adjusted and then I'll show a better shot of that completed okay well, I've got my washer stacked in there and then tightened up that bolt everything's looking good to me uh, in my case I use three washers now this bolts gonna go in the top it's got this conical serrated washer on it make sure you put it in this orientation and these will get tightened up thoroughly okay well that's all been snugged up hopefully you can see this is running downhill about 10 15 degrees uh, those bolts right there are supposed to be torqued to 260 foot pounds according to the directions so super tight then they immediately jump into setting these brackets over the frame and aligning the chains up to lock them on but they fail to mention that you can't do that unless you have the trailer sitting on the ball so that's where we're at right now all right well I was moving into it and I ran into a problem I had mentioned that this is a new model number and hopefully you can see in this picture that this bracket right here is clearly rounded on the top like a horseshoe one I received is square so I'm assuming this is the new design and they didn't bother to go back and retape pictures even though this is the new model number that I have right here here's the issue this hook right here is where you hook your chains and you adjust your chain to set the tension on these bars and it'll fit on the end link which is way too long but it won't fit in between on these links so evidently what they've done is they've beefed up this part to make it a better product which is a good thing but they didn't beef up the chain the chains too small I wish I would have checked that originally but I probably would have found the same issue if I returned this and got another one so I think I'm gonna go down and just get two links of chain providing I can find one that'll fit over here and just be done with it I'm sure that's something they're going to straighten out fairly quickly so that may not be an issue for other folks but buyer beware all right well I went down and purchased some 3 8 chain over the 5 16 that was on it cost me no oh, eight dollars plus tax so now you can see those will fit on there any place I want to hook them or need to hook them just like it's supposed to I'm sure at some point in time Harbor Freight will be taking the 5 16 out and throwing in the 3 8 they're gonna have to because they're going to get a lot of returns and a lot of unhappy people 
I just opted to deal with it rather than spend an hour in the car there and back to potentially get no results and trying to call over there and describe somebody the problem and see if they could open up a box and do what I was doing here would be more trouble than what it was worth so I just spent the money this is a great 70 chain high quality no problem okay I'm back in action I've got my trailer hooked up and I pulled up a few feet to make sure it was directly in line behind me I am having to relocate my battery box no big deal so you just want to put these over the frame hold up your chain make sure it's vertical adjust it side to side if need be hand tighten up the bolt on the back and then tighten it up a quarter of a turn that's all you need to hold these on all right well I needed to make a small correction on my setup when I set the hitch angle in these bars here to 10 to 13 degrees running downhill uh, I didn't compensate for the play that is in there so after I tested everything out I didn't have that quite right so I ended up installing the rest of the shims in there to really make it point downhill further than that so when this is taken up under tension it takes all that slack out of there so according to the manual the first thing you would do is measure from your bumper down on the front and rear of the tow vehicle and make note of that and then you would hook up the tow vehicle to the trailer and then raise the rear of the vehicle up about three inches and that'll make hooking up these chains a lot easier because you won't have as much tension put on them so then you'll bring your clamp down with this bar and make sure you don't have any loops or twists in the chain or kinks and then pick the closest link that will go on it which in my case it's right here and just wrench this over center and at that point you install your clips to keep it from backing off then you would lower it down and remeasure your tow vehicle front and rear and it should come down equally it'll be a lesser measurement you want it to come down equally or be up to about an inch lower in the back and if for some reason that it is not you may need to remove a link out of here and tighten it up and then when you're finished towing same principle in reverse to take the tension load off of these bring your trailer back up or the rear of the vehicle back up a few inches and then it's a lot easier to get these to break over center all right well here's a shot of the completed setup all in all it wasn't too bad to do I still need to lubricate it and of course once I get my trailer all loaded down I'll maybe need to make some minor adjustments here and there no big deal but for you guys that might have toy haulers or heavy trailers tongue weight stuff like that and you're squatting your vehicle uh, this should take care of it but do your research and do your homework I hope this helps in some way thanks for watching and good luck